Around 9 million American civilians are currently living abroad, which for scale is one New Jersey's worth of us out there roaming the world. And of that number, an estimated half a million are American retirees. Numbers have risen sharply in recent years, suggesting that a traditional retirement in America's sunny South or Mountain West may no longer be the top option. So where are all those Americans headed, you ask? Well, if we consult Bloomberg, more Americans than ever are saying goodbye, farewell, and auf Wiedersehen to Uncle Sam and his American way of life, and instead are setting up camp in Europe. So why do more and more Americans choose to spend their golden years sipping Aperol spritzes in Italy, bicycling the tulip fields of the Netherlands, sun tanning in Spain, or indulging in beer and pretzels here in Germany? And how can you do it too? Well, let's take a look. Now, picking a place to retire is one of life's most consequential decisions, and it's a deeply personal one. You may want to settle down by the beach or in the mountains. Maybe you prefer golf courses over cross-country skiing, or maybe you're just simply looking for better opportunities for investments in healthcare. And to be honest, now is as great of a time as ever to revisit American immigration. Given recent high-profile Supreme Court decisions, a spike in the cost of living, and chronically unaffordable housing, all among the major issues contributing to a persistent global perception that America is a less desirable place to live than it used to be. But what do the numbers say? Well, it's a little bit difficult to calculate. The US government doesn't actually formally track how many Americans leave the United States, whether temporarily or permanently meaning that one has to rely on estimates to get a sense of how many US citizens live abroad. However, the number of retirees who draw Social Security outside of the United States jumped 40% to more than 413,000 people between 2007 and 2017. And that number has kept climbing. Latest reports from 2021 show that the number is actually closer to 450,000. Now, to be fair, I would wager that that number is actually pretty low because that number by the Social Security Administration is predicated upon looking at where their Social Security checks are deposited. And many Americans who choose to live abroad still have American bank accounts and they will deposit their Social Security checks in that American account. So they're completely left out of that statistic. And for sure, 450,000 is still a fraction of total American retirees, but it reflects the financial realities for a growing number of baby boomers who are hitting 65 without enough money stashed away to maintain their standard of living. The majority of US citizens living abroad can actually be found in our neighboring countries of Canada and Mexico. Now, part of that is simply due to proximity. If you have family members still in the US, sometimes being close by is the most important factor. But now that COVID restrictions have actually been taken away, there really is a growing trend of American retirees now looking towards Europe as potentially their final destination, particularly amongst the wealthy elite. According to data from the 2022 Coldwell Banker Global Luxury Report, a whopping 92% of wealthy Americans were actively looking to relocate abroad last year. Factors including profitable exchange rates, the shift to remote work, and a very strong US dollar have all helped to turn this once far-flung fantasy into a reality. More specifically, countries like France, Portugal, and Greece are especially compelling for foreigners interested in the citizen by investment programs, or those who plan on renting out their homes. But moving abroad, particularly in retirement, also makes a lot of financial sense as well, even for those who aren't in the top 1%. Many Americans are worried about managing retirement on a limited budget. The median retirement savings for people in the baby boomer age group is only $152,000. Granted, that is the highest of any working generation, but 
that's likely not going to be enough to get them through the length of their golden years. So moving abroad can actually be a pretty solid option if you're looking to reduce your cost of living. According to mylifeelsewhere.com, a website monitoring the cost of living globally, a one bedroom apartment in the average city in Portugal is 57% cheaper than in the average American city, only costing a little over $500 a month. And even in countries with a higher relative cost of living, like here in Germany, for example, you can still find pockets of relative affordability. You just might not need to live in the city center of Munich. Or like in our home city of Freiburg, for example, it's certainly not the cheapest place to live, but you can still find a one bedroom apartment outside of the city center for about 650 euros a month, around $700. And with clean, easy public transit networks, great food, entertainment, stunning forest landscapes, just out your back door, and travel hotspots like the Swiss Alps and the French wine region, just a short drive or a train ride away, cities like mine are, I'm not gonna lie, a pretty attractive option. And before you come at me in the comment section, listen, do not get me wrong. Inflation is still a problem in Europe. It's a problem in the US as well. Um, but when you look at Europe specifically, even with the inflation in energy prices and with food, in most European countries, that inflation is taken off of a much lower base price to begin with. But you know, beyond simple finances, what are some of the other reasons why Americans might be looking to retire abroad in the first place? Americans living abroad who are worried about managing retirement on a limited budget have a new nickname, economic refugees. And especially when we're talking about people who are in their golden years, yeah, it's not surprising to me that medical care and medical cost are the most cited reason for wanting to look to retire abroad in Europe. Even though Americans who are at least 65 are in fact covered by Medicare, out-of-pocket health costs for retirees are mounting. The typical couple will need a total of $285,000 to cover health expenses in their retirement decades. And Medicare doesn't cover all health costs. It excludes most dental work and long-term care, for example. And it can come with co-pays and other out-of-pocket expenses for doctor's visits and medications. Now, whether or not you actually qualify for public health insurance as an American retiree, also known as universal healthcare here in Europe, is going to depend on a number of factors, and that's also going to vary from country to country. However, here in Germany, there are a couple of really important things that you should know. For starters, health insurance is essential for internationals who want to retire in Germany and get the residence permit. You must have health insurance or your visa will not be approved. If you're solely looking to move to Germany just to retire, just like self-employed individuals, you will also voluntarily sign up for a public health care scheme for which you have to pay the contributions on your own. Additionally, you can opt for only private coverage, although you have to keep in mind that the older you are, the more costly your insurance will be. And only those who have been working in Germany for a minimum of five years are eligible for the pensioner's health insurance or the German state pension. And you know, beyond healthcare costs, um, there's something that I actually found quite interesting. Uh, what research actually shows is that the other big factor beyond healthcare for why Americans are looking to retire abroad in Europe has actually more to do with the sense of adventure of it all. And not necessarily because of social or political motivations. And that's actually a pretty common myth that's worth clearing up. After the 2004 re-election of George Bush and the 2020 election of Joe Biden and the 2016 election of Donald Trump, Google search interest in moving to Canada spiked. It happened again in June after the US Supreme Court overturned the landmark abortion rights ruling of Roe versus Wade. According to recent Gallup polls, as much as 15% of Americans say that they wanna leave the country permanently. And even more say they would reconsider expatriating under the right circumstances. But the truth is a very small percentage of Americans actually put their money where their mouth is. 
a very, very tiny percentage of Americans actually leave the United States because of political grumbling. Even fewer flee under true duress or peril. The UN Refugee Agency lists just 426 American refugees in 2021 with Germany and the UK and Canada being their top destinations. That's vanishingly small compared with 6.8 million from Syria, 2.7 million from Afghanistan, or 2.4 million from South Sudan. Instead, research from Tufts University shows that a large majority of Americans want to actually move abroad to explore or to have an adventure. And when Americans go abroad in search of that adventure, they often find something else a significant other or a significant paycheck, which turns a traveler into an expatriate before they know it. And that, not political protest, has actually become the prototypical American immigrant story. And that's pretty much the story of our family as well. Jonathan came to Germany just on a two-year work visa. He wasn't planning on staying here long-term. But then he came here and realized how much he loved it how much he liked this lifestyle of living and living in the Black Forest specifically. So that two-year work visa turned into a five-year, turned into 10 years, and now he has permanent residence here in Germany. We have two kids, we bought a house, and quite frankly, we, we probably don't plan on leaving anytime soon. And I would wager that such a sense of adventure is also a huge driving factor for others looking to retire in Europe as well. In addition to the fact that it can be quite stimulating to live somewhere new, many of the most popular countries for American retirees are notable for their scenery, beaches, and year-round sunshine. Travel is very popular with this age group, and Europe offers a tapestry of cultures and places to explore within just a three-hour flight, making it less expensive and quicker to visit. Additionally, entertainment possibilities are often much broader than in any one location in the United States with everything from water sports to hiking, golf, art, winery, shopping, and restaurants. Again, often at 30% more or less than stateside. But last and certainly not least, a heck of a lot of Americans simply choose to leave the United States for safety reasons. And although there are a lot of factors that go into personal safety, perhaps this is the best, most comprehensive measurement. And in 2023, 14 of the top 20 most peaceful countries in the world were in Europe. The United States comes in at 131st. Now in general, in the majority of EU nations, if you're actually legitimately looking to retire here, you're going to have to prove that you can cover all of your living expenses without relying on any public funds. Now, this can come in a variety of measures. It can happen with your retirement pension, with your annuities, or any other form of passive income you might have. Germany actually doesn't set a specific numerical threshold for financial stability, but as a rule of thumb, you should have a regular income that's above the at-risk-of-poverty threshold in Germany. As of 2021, this was around 1,200 euros a month for a single person. However, this exact amount can of course vary depending on your lifestyle, your health insurance, or even where you plan on moving to here in Germany as the cost of living can vary significantly from one zip code to another. In fact, if you wanna learn more, we have written an entire blog post on how to retire in Germany on our website. So be sure to check it out. But if you do happen to have a significant nest egg built up, there's actually a pretty popular option for people who are looking to retire abroad. And that is getting citizenship by investment. And the most popular investment is real estate. Now, not every country offers this option, but for those who do, it can actually be a pretty attractive way on getting a residence visa over here in Europe. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Portugal, for example, issues residence permits to the financially independent under the D7 visa. Applicants must confirm a passive income of at least 760 euros per month and buy or rent a property in Portugal. Greece issues residence permits to those investing at least 250,000 euros in real estate. This is the lowest real estate threshold among EU resident permit programs. Notably, investors are allowed to rent out that property. And in five years, they can actually get permanent residence and sell the property. In another two years, they become eligible for citizenship. 
Cyprus also gives permanent residence to investors who buy real estate for at least 300,000 euros. Program participants can purchase one or two new residential properties or commercial properties on primary or secondary markets. After five years of living in Cyprus, investors can obtain citizenship. In Malta, permanent residence can be obtained by purchasing residential property for at least 220,000 euros. Another option is to rent one for at least 10,000 euros a year and for at least five years. Investors also pay a one-time administrative fee, make state contributions and a charitable donation and confirm capital of at least 500,000 euros. Spain provides resident permits for investing 500,000 euros or more in real estate. Investors can obtain permanent residence in five years and apply for citizenship in another five. And finally, in Italy, the investor visa doesn't actually have a real estate option, but is nevertheless popular among US expats. The minimum threshold is 250,000 euros, and the applicants choose between investing in an innovation startup, business, philanthropic organization, or government bonds. Investors can apply for citizenship after 10 years of permanent residence in Italy. All right, guys, so at this point in the video, I would love to hear from you down in the comment section. What are your plans for retirement in the future? Do you plan on spending your golden years in your hometown where you're currently located, or do you want to move to somewhere sunnier? Uh, this is a conversation that I actually find really interesting because Jonathan and I have talked about it on numerous occasions, and presuming we can actually get German citizenship with the free right to movement within the EU, um, I think there's probably like two likely scenarios for us. Either we buy a tiny house in the Black Forest and live there part-time and rent it out uh, part-time so that we can travel, uh, or we've also talked about uh, in the future just downsizing, selling everything that we don't need and buying a condo in Spain or Portugal or Greece, somewhere on the water that we can kind of keep as a home base. Uh, and maybe it's like a condo that's part of a duplex or triplex so that it could be more of like an income property for us. Uh, I don't know. These are all just kind of far-fetched dreams at this point. Um, but I think, I think our future definitely is one where we kind of downsize everything and really just travel and explore the world. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comment section. What are your plans? What are you guys gonna do? Uh, let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from Ty Bastion, hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you next Sunday. Cheers.